He's at it again. Coach Prime making some moves through the transfer portal on the offensive line, landing a big time wide receiver from the SEC. What can we glean from this about Coach Prime? What can we glean from this about the direction of Colorado in 2024? We'll talk about all that. First things first, make sure you subscribe now. College football, it does not stop. I understand we're in the bowl season. The games are going to wrap up here and it breaks our heart. But even so, we're still talking college football right here on the show every single day. So one, subscribe. We appreciate you so much for that. Two, make sure you follow me on the social channels at JD Pakel, Twitter and on Instagram. So like I was saying, let's kind of set the table here. The problem a season ago, among other things, was the offensive lineman not good enough. I know that. You knew that. Shadur Sanders absolutely knew that, getting sacked over 50 times throughout the season. He says, you know what? He being Deion Sanders says, you know what? We're going to get some new linemen. And he, he didn't say that just to himself by it, you know, quietly in the office. He said that to the media during a press conference. He's like, how do we fix it? Go to the portal and get new linemen. He's done exactly that. We knew he would do so. Landed seven offensive linemen in the span of seven days. So just like that, the offensive line gets a facelift, and you would imagine whatever they brought in is better than what they had a season ago. Hard to do too much worse than 50 sacks throughout the course of a season. Over 50 sacks, that is. Also landed an elite wide receiver talent in Will Shepard from Vanderbilt. And even though he was at Vandy, and that's no shade to Vandy, like they're just a, an operation trying to get up off the ground here a little bit in the most difficult conference in America. In that most difficult conference, he had 2,000 yards, 21 touchdowns the last three years at Vanderbilt. One of the top wide receivers in the transfer portal, according to us here at On3. Dude's a baller. Okay, so what does this all mean? The moves he's making right now in the portal also picked up uh, two transfer portal commits from a couple of twin brothers that were at Kentucky, both four-star recruits in the class of 2022. So all that's to say, they're acquiring talent through the portal. We saw this a season ago. We're seeing it again right now. I don't think we'll see the same quantity that we saw last year by nature of how they overhauled the roster from a space perspective and from just quite frankly a uh, NCAA perspective. That there's you know some murkiness with what those rules will or won't be at the time I was recording this. But what I want to ask here is what does this mean? What does it mean that Deion Sanders is landing seven offensive linemen through the portal and a big-time wide receiver and a couple of former four-star recruits from the SEC at Kentucky? What does it mean? To me, I think it communicates one major thing, and that is that the Dion brand is still enormously strong. Yes, they went 4-8 and eight last year. Yes, they finished in a really lackluster fashion. But when we look at the kind of talent they're still acquiring, let's not ignore the success they had to start the year. And we came on this very show and told you, we strongly believe that regardless of what they do the rest of the season, this was sometime when they were, I want to say, like 3-1, and one, They've already had success. They've already stamped 2023 a success. Now, it wasn't the success they wanted to have on the field, but I mean by providing the proof of concept that if you come to Colorado, this thing is heading a certain direction on the field by nature of what we did in those first three games, there's a base there. It's clearly not built out by nature of how they finished the season, those last nine games, but to, to just say there's nothing on the field there to work with, with Shadour Sanders, with Travis Hunter, and all those pieces around them, yes, it's got to improve. But the on-field opportunity, I think, is still attractive. Now, potentially as important in some guys, maybe more importantly, the off-field opportunity at, at Colorado is also massive. Going back to what I said about the Dion Brandt, didn't finish how you want to, but you would be crazy to think that you're not going to get the maximum amount of exposure and the maximum amount of creating value for yourself at a place like Colorado under Coach Prime, based on what we saw last season. Like, they were the story of college football for that first month. You got college game day coming there when they're playing a G5 opponent. All right, so that, like, that doesn't really happen. doesn't really happen with college game day, but it happened with Colorado. And clearly, what they did last year for the rest of the country, the exposure they got is still resonating with certain individuals in the transfer portal. The offense clearly attractive to playmakers by nature of Will Shepard, by nature of Shadur Sanders. The offensive line had a ton of opportunity to play right away, you'd have to believe, with those seven offensive linemen that decided to take their talents to Boulder, Colorado. That was priority number one. So that's kind of where we stand right now. Still acquiring talent. The brand's still strong. Still has enough staying power to get some guys on campus. But what's next? What's the next thing for Colorado? Well, on the field, you got to have some big boys on the other side of the ball. Because last year, they were not good stopping the run with Colorado. And if, if you want to take that next step as a team and compete for conference titles when you move into the Big 12, you cannot be a one-dimensional kind of team. And I'm not talking about just being able to throw the football. I'm talking about just being an offensive team. Because if you can't stop the run, 
and your opponent can just line it up and play keep away and control the game for the better part of those four quarters, like it doesn't matter how many points you can score when you have the football, your margin for error shrinks tremendously because your opponent can just out physical you when they have the football. And again, make sure to Sanders watch the duration of those four quarters. So that's the next step on the field. But this is the big question that I have now. How functional will they be? And I'm not talking about, will they have the right plays drawn up? Will they have the right scheme and the right personnel? To me, I come down to function when it talk about Colorado. To me, it's all about function for Colorado in this next year for Deion Sanders. Because even last year, I understand on the line of scrimmage, they lacked some things to be successful throughout the course of the year. When you look at what they had in-house, they were good enough to win more football games than what they did. To me, the function is what held them back. You got players that have been at other places tweeting about what's going on at Colorado saying, hey, we got selfish ball being played right now. You have coaches that are being demoted and Sean Lewis from the OC taking those positions away from him. And then he goes and takes the head coaching job at another school. That's a bad look. That is a bad look that another organization feels that the person you demoted is good enough to be their head coach. And I don't think that's a San Diego State problem. I think that's a Colorado problem, just so we're all on the same page there. So as you attract this talent now, The question I have is, are those players you're attracting, and I'm not saying this with any, you know, implication, I'm just asking the question because I think it has to be asked, are those players you're attracting players that are pursuing the same mission of your football team, which is we want to win football games, we want to compete for conference titles, or are they pursuing what your football team can bring them? And this is not unique just to Colorado, but by nature of what Colorado offers with, again, the exposure, the brand power, all that. You have to imagine that's going to attract some people that just want to build their brand, that just want to try and create value from an NIL perspective, that just want to be a part of the documentary series, like all that. I'm just saying that's something that comes with the brand you've built in a positive sense. It attracts the right player, but I think it also, to the same degree, it can attract the wrong player. So how you manage that and how your team becomes functional culturally, that's the big question I have. I don't doubt Deion Sanders and his leadership. I don't. I think what happened in year one was about, quite frankly, what I think some of us expected, which was it might take a second to get going. I respect Coach Prom. I love what he's done for college football. I love what he's doing at Boulder. To flip the entire team, the entire roster, go from one win to four wins, like let's not act like that's not impressive. We're not recalibrating our expectations on Deion Sanders because they had some success early on. It's a build. It's a build, and if they do it the right way through the portal and then set the right standard, the right temperature internally and become more functional, they're going to be dangerous. So year two is clearly a very big year, a pivotal year, in my opinion, for what they're going to be in the future. And I can't wait to watch it. Because, again, it's very clear that the Deion Sanders brand is still attractive to guys through the portal. I do not believe they're done acquiring talent. I do not believe they're done building that roster to be as competitive as possible in 2024. Keep it locked right here. Make sure you're subscribed. Have about 70% of y'all that have not yet subscribed to the channel. Would appreciate y'all jumping on board, being a part of this as we move full speed ahead into the new year. Love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Going to keep this party rolling and we will see y'all next time. Hey y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.